Hey guys, I'm Saib Singh and today I'm going to be talking about my one week experience and features that I've come across on iOS 14 with my iPhone 10 and 10R. Let's get into it. So starting off with the biggies, the widget and app library. As we talk about widget, to get into it, you can simply long press anywhere on the home screen and get into the jiggle mode first. Uh, in the jiggle mode now, if you see the cross symbol on the app is replaced with the minus which give you an option to either delete the app or add it to library getting back to widget you can click on the plus symbol on top left corner and you're into it as of now we only have stock applications like news weather music photos etc even cd shortcuts which i believe is the most useful element of widget since uh, i've been using it a lot and it gives me an option to run a task on the go to add a widget, you can simply drag and drop the widget on the home screen. You can add as many widgets as you want. Uh, you can add different size, of medium, small and large, which are the default options given by Apple as of now. You can edit a widget as well. You can just long press on a widget and hit the edit widget option. And the options as per widget will be available, which in this case is folders for shortcuts. So now you can create a folder in CD shortcuts. You can create a folder and you can add your customized shortcuts in that. Folder is not just limited to CD shortcuts. You can see them across applications like voice memo, which I'll get back into it shortly. You can also add a smart stack widget as Apple mentioned or the keynote which is basically autonomous as Apple mentioned it function as for your activities and shows you uh, you know basically it's it's basically a bundle of uh, widgets which uh, uh, which uh, changes as per your activity as what Apple said you can also create your own custom widget a smart one you just simply drop a widget and you drop another one on top of it and it's created you have to just make sure that the size of widget are same that you want to, that you're trying to create a smart widget for so that was widgets where, which was which is free which is clean uh, but it doesn't give you much options when it comes to place it as it gives you on android to the old section of widgets on iphone in the notification center uh, all the stock applications have their own widget and the battery one have a new style it's, it's in the ring and it shows you bold percentage and uh, that's about it i think the most it will be used is when your screen is locked and you just want to see something very quickly talking about the app library app library i believe is combination of the quick search and uh, the bundled folder option that you previously used to get on, uh, on the iPhone. It is basically a smart folder option which combines your application as per their type from the App Store or on your home screen. You can enable and disable the badge icons, the, the app badge icons, notification badges from the settings. If Spotlight search is now more efficient when you search anything you just try three words of an application and it's there and you hit on the go button you don't you don't even uh, you don't even need to click on the application you just type the three letters you see the result and you click the go button and you're into the app that's how efficient the spotlight search is also the map apps have the new updates in india of course the new updates might not be that functional so the bicycle option as shown in the keynote is available in the app so if you you know uh, although it doesn't show you the directions but you can toggle it it's of no use anyways but i i believe in future they must be available for different countries moving off to the notes app uh, now this feature of notes app of uh, recognizing a shape is basically from the ipad os but it's still use uh, but you can still use that on the iphone you can basically create and you can draw any shape star circle square triangle any of them you just complete and you hold it and it automatically gives it a perfect shape you change is in the color section in the color picker now when you go to the color picker you can see various options the grid spectrum and slider so you can literally enter a hex code and you know you can select any color that you want you can also add it to your library and save it as your color you can pick a color from the active screen and add it to your 
custom library of this color section and uh, this is not just there in the notes app but basically even when you take a screenshot you hit to the the preview and if you click on edit and if you go to color section you get the same option and you can do all the same things over there uh, moving to magnifier magnifier now have a huge makeover a new set of options the new look you can you can go and increase and decrease the contrast you can go and increase the contrast you can select filters now there are different filters you can apply grayscale color negative and yellow and and all those kind of you know different things if you want to see things more clearly you can enable and toggle torch and you can even decrease and increase the brightness you can take a screenshot or a preview of a magnified object or something that you want to see you know more vividly and it's not going to save in your gallery it's just going to be as a preview in the app moving on to settings now you get a new option for home screen in settings you can basically select when you download the app from app you need to keep it in the home screen or you want to move it to app library directly you get a new option in accessibility touch double tap uh, the back tap which is basically tap twice or thrice from back and you can enable anything you can even enable shortcuts so uh, if I go and select uh, water eject so now if I double tap from back so it's a, it's a little buggy I guess sometimes it's works sometimes it doesn't it, it takes a little time it takes two second or three seconds uh, it works sometimes it doesn't and uh, I think it's a it's a good feature to have an extra option to run a few tasks which are you know which are good to have I, I believe so shortcuts would be a good thing to add or a screenshot option uh, now control center in settings the options previously were inside now you can you get all the options outside again you get sound recognition sleep mode hearing and few more options in control center you also get home control options to enable or disable in control center basically you can see all the home uh, actions in control center and uh, now if you go to sound recognition in control center there are different type of sounds which it recognizes and give you a notification different sounds like car, uh, car horn, doorbell and uh, running water etc. So most of the people are getting notifications for running water and a crying baby. Even I got notification for running water and for me uh, it worked pretty well as of uh, till now. Moving over to the voice memo app, so now when you open the app for the first time you get this flash screen and it basically tells you that there is this new function where you can you know edit the voice recording and you can remove the background noise uh, till to an extent but it, uh, it, it helps pretty much well I guess yeah I don't use voice memo app that much I basically prefer GarageBand but then it's, it's a good to have function in your go to application for recording voice and recording lectures or something like that. It's, uh, it's a pretty good uh, good feature moving over to safari so safari in terms of privacy have got this new update of tracking report where it tells you that how many websites are trying to track and they have active trackers and you can see the list of it and it uh, safari also prevents you from you know websites to uh, track and profile you and uh, you also have this website setting options where you can enable permissions for a particular website for some reason the translate option on my safari is not working so i couldn't show you that but uh, i hope it works or i get an option to activate that soon talking of privacy now when you go to settings privacy and location services and in individual applications which are trying to track your locations now you can turn on and turn off precise location this function basically stops the app to track your precise location and sends an approximate location for me on my 10R camera application has got the new update which is not basically new because this functionality was available for the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro and I guess other iPhones as well where you can select the quality of a video when you're trying to shoot it you can change the resolution now I get this option on my 10R as well. So Apple have added uh, you know small interactions in apps like Reminder 
uh, small interactions for options so now in reminder app when you create a new reminder you get the small interactions for adding a date location and even when you if you want to add a picture in a particular reminder or a note when you're making it to a list or something like that this uh, this interactions are very beautiful and is uh, are very quick and uh, it's it's just amazing you know how they're playing with the interactions in this various application the bedtime option which was previously there in the clock app is now moved to the health application and is now known as sleep uh, where the options basically are the same where you you set the schedule of how many hours you want to sleep and what time you want to wake up and now there's this option of win down basically before you get uh, where you get a notification uh, before the bed uh, before the sleep time and you can add wind down shortcuts which you can uh, which can be as per your custom selection which you may want to see before you sleep and uh, uh, it's it's clean on the lock screen as well you can activate it from the control center as well uh, the music app has got the update which is basically the new Spotify of Apple version, I believe, because it literally looks like the Spotify app to me when I go to the search function or the browse function. It looks like Spotify to me, and uh, but the Applish version, I could say. Uh, so this the search is purely just Spotify, but it's good to see this illustration and yeah, the new design. And now when you switch to the to the lyric function of a music, uh, there was no time uh, option where you could see the duration of the music. Now you can see that and you can also control from there as well. So that's uh, a good option, I see. But uh, the new app, the new music app is, is uh, just as same as the Spotify. And uh, yeah, they also got the Spotify shuffle option as well in the Apple Music app but it's good it's clean it's beautiful and Spotify ish iMessages and iMessages has got a good set of updates this time pinning a conversation filters and a lot of good things we'll watch them along so you can pin and unpin a conversation dragging and dropping them or as per the list and you can uh, maximum of nine nine conversations there are maximum of nine conversations that you can pin and uh, there are new options in uh, Memojis where you can basically, you know, add different head shapes and different kind of skin tone and colors to hairs and different kind of stuff. They've also added the mask option uh, because of the Corona uh, pandemic. They've added mask option where you can add mask. The reply, rumored reply feature is very good. It's very beautiful. I just feel one thing that they should have added gesture feature as well, gesture option as well when replying to a message. It would have been very great and efficient like it's there on whatsapp but anyways it's it's a good feature to have it's beautifully executed you get this blur effect when you view the reply thing and stuff so there's also this filter option where conversation are filtered automatically by the message app of known known senders and unknown senders where you know basically conversations are separated automatically and transactions are also separated now when someone send a message in a group conversation you can see their batch basically the image and the recent message that they have sent you can now also go and customize the group you can add a group icon which can be basically emojis or your desired image that you want to add you can also you know rename the group and it might show you emojis related to that and now you can also mention someone in a group conversation by just writing their name and you can see the pop-up of the image of the contact that's about it for the iMessage the phone application has also got few updates phone or how you see contacts basically it has got a new look with clean black background and things are more clear now you know more uh, interactive how you see the options and uh, when you long press on any of the icons you get this new view of lists how you see it it's not just there in the contact app even when you go to settings application and if you navigate through different options and how you see the options to navigate to different pages is also the same you get the same option and list view over there as well it's clean it's good i guess and it's interactive if you ask me actually the greatest feature or the big update for ios 14 this year is security 
it basically tells you what applications are trying to track what so now when you copy paste anything from a particular application and you try to paste it somewhere you get the header notification thing when you paste something and it basically tells you what trying to copy and what are you pasting from where uh, one more thing which I'm very disappointed about the uh, the shooting star effect from iMessage yeah Apple have removed that uh, I, I don't know why there was already very less effects and they've also gotten rid of one of the very good effects I'm very disappointed there is also this hearing option in control center you if you turn it on you can basically see the decibel amount of the hear voice that you're listening right now on an active device now you get an animation when you connect your Bluetooth device on your iPhone uh, just like this and now also you can go to settings and go to Bluetooth and you can rename any Bluetooth device that you're connected to right now so currently if I'm connected to my headphones I can rename them to whatever name I want now you can enable headphone accommodations for basically any Bluetooth device which are supported like other than airpods or beats you can just go to accessibility and uh, uh, hearing devices and headphone accommodations you can enable that and you can you know customize the options as per your preferences so the picture in picture is now available on the ios 14 although it doesn't function with all the applications like the youtube star applications you can still go to safari on youtube.com and uh, go to full screen mode and then just you know swipe up and you're in the full screen uh, picture in picture mode uh, the picture in picture mode also go ahead and function you can uh, play the music in background you can lock the screen and from the lock screen from the player you can play the music and it still works in the background I think it's just there temporarily they might remove it in the future Siri and Siri has got a new update it has got a new look over and it's basically just a small circle you just use hey Siri and if you basically ask her like weather or stuff like that it shows you a preview of widget yeah now this I can see is basically just the view of a widget of weather widget if you add it on your home screen and now Siri has improved the information that it tells you so now if you ask her things like it was tell, uh, told in the keynote like why do colors or why do flamingos are pink it basically tells you more precise options sometimes it speaks back to you and sometimes it's not I think it's a bug and it might be improved in the upcoming updates photos application photos application has got some small tweaking updates like super zooming an image or a video you can super zoom that not just in the photos application but any photo on throughout the operating system and they've also got small, small tweakings like uh, adding caption to a particular image now when you open an image and you swipe up you can add caption to that image which is basically good I think if you want to search for a particular image you can you can add tags to them and it's a, it's a good thing to have other than that if you you know edit and save a video you get the small effect NFC tags now on my iPhone 10 not on my iPhone XR I don't know why my iPhone 10 I, on control center I get this option for NFC tag I think it's for the for the app clips option for the future but uh, I didn't have that on my 10R for some reason other than these changes there are some small security changes like Wi-Fi ma Mac address masking and telling you if the password is being compromised for a particular website it gives you an option to change the password and it tells you that the password has been compromised and in news app the articles are also dark which previously were not there in the dark mode and in battery notification you also see the indication of hearing aid and uh, there are new glyph animation when setting up the new iPhone from scratch not just in iPhone but also on Mac OS the new own translate application of Apple it's a very good app I believe and as they demonstrated in the keynote it works just exactly like that it's big it's a little bit buggy sometimes but it doesn't speak back to you when you want to hear the tran uh, translation from a different language but other than that the app is very good and uh, it uh, is also used in Safari as for some reason I was not able to use that and uh, the full view version is very clean sometime you have to play the audio and goodbye <laughs>